into this uh, tube and then you have a screw that transports the biomass up to here and this tube is heated by a second kind of tube with hot gases well, they come in here with something like 700 degrees so from here you have 20 degrees it goes up to here you have 500 so it heats up this small biomass uh, up to 500 degrees it takes about 20 minutes and then it's carbonized and this carbon goes out here so this is biochar but um, about half of it is not biochar but gas so it gets out here a lot of wood gas and then you burn so when you burn it here you have a very clean uh, emissions that just goes out here it's more or less as water vapor and CO2 and uh, the warmth you see here you get back here so you have a close loop you put biomass in uh, it carbonizes slowly and the gas that is produced uh, produces the heat that comes back and heats the new biomass so you can do that for um, for days and for days and always producing new biomass and you have uh, an equal quality of biochar There are several biomass that can be used for biochar of course we can think about the most valuable ones that are food fresh food or even the residues of the food industries uh, but also uh, we can uh, think about other kind of biomasses uh, that are uh, uh, coming from uh, different kind of industries we have had an example today by hearing all these experts of using uh, what is left by the paper industry it's just syllabus or what is left by the cotton industries or by, by what is left uh, by the agro industries right? like all different schemes all different uh, uh, residues when you produce uh, uh, food and also there is another possibility that is the residues from the animal industries so I'm talking about mayor generally but also animal bones or animal skins or other kind of uh, uh, residues uh, that are normally not used in other processes. So what uh, biochar helps us is to reduce wastes, to reuse wastes, wastes and uh, finally to recycle and to keep all in the natural cycle. This is the main uh, added value and on this chain, on this idea, uh, one can produce different products uh, with different uh, added value chains. The harmonization of water supply, uh, absorption of uh, retention of uh, plant nutrients in soil is uh, very much important, which uh, is resulting, of course, uh, uh, higher yield and uh, improved uh, Product quality on the food crop. Um, the um, fertilization effect uh, of the bone based biochar is very clear. This is a full value fertilizer. This is very important uh, in that case because uh, bone based biochar is a um, substitute uh, for uh, mineral rock phosphate uh, fertilizers, which are often have a problem of heavy metals such as cadmium and uranium. The biochar and carbon products 
having a long list of different applications. Uh, in our case, in our mandate uh, from the Commission through the FRP project is to investigate uh, biochar use uh, in agriculture for safe food production and the cycle of waste and byproduct by materials into um, soil additives and organic fertilizers. The, um, the uh, soil application is certainly is one of the most important elements. However, uh, biochar is used for adsorbents, used for uh, additive, for manure treatment, for uh, animal-free ingredients, and uh, even cosmetics and many different other applications are, uh, are viable and uh, but one uh, of the major industrial uh, use of the next 10 years uh, probably be on the building industry um, producing bricks uh, or with biochar, biochar lime or biochar clay or biochar uh, cement uh, bricks, uh, plastering of buildings and this is uh, one of the best insulation material uh, it improves also the climate in the room and uh, has a balancing uh, effect on the humidity in the room. So it is really improving uh, the quality of living in a room, or also for storing, uh, storing like uh, food. The idea that is behind developing a biochar cluster is instead of developing several different small-scale carbon cycling industries, all different, exploiting the real biodiversity that we do have in Europe. So instead of building, you know, a big, huge or standardized plant that produces biochar, same quality, same things with the same biomass all over Europe, we want to try to understand if it is possible to develop a local cluster, a local carbon cycle that is using the biomass that is most available there, that is using the information and the knowledge of farmers that are in that uh, place. Safe hatching comes number one because uh, anyone who is using biochar must be really, really aware of that application of biochar into soil is an irrevocable process. Once the biochar is in the soil, then that's it, then that is there. So it must be rather sure what quality of biochar put into the soil, what conditions and whether this biochar fits to that type of soil, uh, that region, uh, and uh, providing uh, good benefit or, or uh, maybe not. Uh, the other uh, problems are linked with the technology itself. In order to develop uh, a technology or a, I say a value chain that is fit for that particular local region, you need to study it. You need a legislation that is adapted to the local situation. So it's not a legislation that fits all over Europe. You need you know, to discuss with people and explain to people what you are really doing. So I will you know, see that there are some technological problems uh, that now are on the shoulders of the intrapreneurs. There exist um, clearly defined thresholds and limits uh, for different substances that are used in agriculture, like for compost um, or for fertilizer. And um, these thresholds uh, will be the same for biochar. Biochar is a different um, substrate which adsorbs uh, many different compounds and it's difficult to uh, extract these compounds. So analytical methods um, for biochar are not the same as for soil, but limits uh, will be the same. 
So we get uh, sometimes into a kind of conflict that, uh, in fact, it's a different product than a fertilizer, or a different product than compost, or a different com uh, product than soil. It needs different methods and would need different thresholds.